I have to out myself here, and I, maybe I should have mentioned this at the beginning of the podcast, but I am a huge fan of Prisma and also Nexus, so basically of all of your work. <laughs> I've been using Prisma for pretty much exclusively for the past two, three years almost, and pretty much all of the GraphQL APIs I've been building have been built with Nexus, including, by the way, GraphCDN. GraphCDN is fully based on Prisma and Nexus. We have our own dashboard GraphQL API. And I've always wondered, you know, Prisma nowadays to me feels incredibly easy to use, right? Right? I just type and, and I don't even have to think about it and I get my data. It's almost beautiful in a weird way, right? It, it, it's really, it's hard to explain, but when you're using it, it's just, it's just an amazing experience. And I can imagine that it wasn't easy to get there, right? So what were some of the learnings that you took from, you know, you were building this GraphQL as a service thing to transitioning into more of the ORM database layer to then transitioning from Prisma 1 to Prisma 2. What, what were some of the learnings that you took away that eventually resulted in this, at, at least from an outside perspective, beautiful design, even though I'm sure you're aware of all of its warts and faults and all the rough edges that you, people complain about? <laughs> I, yeah, I should probably mention I joined Prisma, I said, two years ago. And at that time, that was well underway with Prisma 2, but it hadn't been released yet. And then the team... I was putting that together, eventually shipped Prisma 2, I think it was in the spring of 20, 2020. And so maybe about six months after I joined and they did amazing work. And I wasn't really part of my, just wasn't part of my responsibility. So I came on to sort of work on the open source portfolio of Prisma. And then that eventually kind of focused down onto Nexus and then it became just Nexus. And then eventually I transitioned to the Prisma data platform. But so the client has always been amazing to see the team kind of evolve and work on that. And I think definitely, you know, learnings in that, that the company itself has had, I think already the journey I mentioned from GraphCool to Prisma 1 to Prisma 2, like that in itself has been a really grandiose learning, you know, path for everyone involved at the company. I think flexibility and meeting developers where they are and allowing them to, like part of what I think makes Prisma sort of magical, uh, or at least that we, we, we aim for that is you feel like you like there is a Prisma data platform. And of course, that starts to look more like a hosted option or some kind of hosted product commercial kind of piece that, that maybe starts to look, yeah, like how Hasira looks or, or something where it's like, okay, I've got to like log in and right. But I think that the Prisma client, it's really important to us that that remains a kind of open source pillar uh, that you can just NPM install. And like, there's no strings attached, that, that this just is there like any other library. And I think that's, there's a magical feeling to just, that independence of it's just another package. You don't have to sign in first to use it or any kind of, you know, it's just got that sort of, hey, I'm, I'm, we're just, we're le- like on the level playing field of any other NPM package. Um, and I think that's that's pretty core to that particular product, the Prisma client, you know, part of that. We've made a lot of progress. Like it, it ends up working well in almost all cases. It's, it's really great work. And I know Tim, uh, who is no longer at Prisma, but uh, did a lot of, amazing work on on that before he left and and I think he was making patches to TypeScript compiler on the Microsoft repository there for for TypeScript right to kind of get us over the over the line on some features that we wanted to ship to users and so that there's been a lot of sweat i would say poured over just getting the types right and working and that's and i think that shows because it generally gets out of users ways there's still these cases and, and I'll report them since data, pl- you know, of course, the Prisma data platform is a consumer Prisma client, just like any other project out there. And so we, we get to sort of be the user side a lot of the time and we'll report back. Hey, like I, I kind of found a way to slip through the type system here when, you know, I added this field and then the return didn't quite honor, you know, the, the variable or something. So there's usually kind of cracks in the types sometimes, but uh, I think we've done still a pretty good job in most cases and, uh, and we'll continue to improve those cracks, of course. But even even at this point, I think it, it works really well for, for most cases most and most users most of the time. I should have mentioned it too at the beginning of the show. I mean, I've been using GraphCool and I've known Johannes since GraphCool. It's been a long time. Uh, and Nicholas as well. But at Gatsby, when we first, start, first started to architect the cloud platform, we were using Prisma 1. We were probably like right when Prisma 2 came out, we were like, thank God. So we started putting that right in, into some of our microservices. The thing I loved about Prisma 2... Because like you still had the same nice client with a lot more features and you know indexing and all the great things you need, but it was I didn't have to deploy another separate piece of infrastructure, right? I didn't have to use a Helm chart to put a Prisma cluster. We used to call them Prisma clusters back in the day with our Prisma services inside them. Now you just uh, embed your client as a query engine, you deploy it with your service, and you call it a day. Yeah, I think that the query engine part is is probably one of the more magical parts that. 
hopefully in most cases don't have to think about. And I, as far as I've seen, that's really the case. You know, that's that's what our users for the most part tell us, and that's what happens for us on the data platform. Like there is actually a Rust binary there running at runtime. Did you know? And like, and think in almost all cases you don't need to know. And it's just there doing its job very quietly. The post install part with like the Prisma generate also just just works. So there's been and there's so, sort of these workflow parts that allow Nexus Prisma's unconventional architecture with how it's generated from your Prisma schema. So it has this aspect that most node modules, right, node packages don't have to deal with. There's been a lot of sweat with package managers and like the post install hooks and all this stuff. Just, yeah, it's doing some unconventional things, but that's not going to be your problem. And so getting to that point has been a lot of sweat over details, but I think in the end it's worth it, right? Because it, it does for the most part, yeah, just for sure. another package. For sure. And the way it was doing it before, it's just been such an innovation um, from Prisma 1. 